Hello, welcome to the Wasting Time Podcast. I'm Chris. Oh, I'm introducing myself. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was hoping for. I, did, I didn't really give you a warning there, to be fair. <laughs> and I am your part-time host, Nick. Very part-time host. Yeah, I'm out of practice, that's what it is. Yeah, that's true. I, that's true. I, I do these things so infrequently now that, I, yeah. you know, I just, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Inclu- including, including music as well, so... This is essentially your opportunity to tell me what what the fuck is going on. Okay, okay. Well, it's oh, it's a pleasure to have your company. Thanks. Um, obviously, I haven't missed one big release. That is obviously just like, even whether you're a pop punk, like punk rock fan, you. I don't think you could have avoided like the Blink One Eighty Two album release that landed. Very true. Um, Let's take a moment to discuss that. You're probably. You probably got a more detailed breakdown, but I'd I've invested a fair bit of time when it was released, but okay, been a bit of a gap since, so it's one right. I need to kind of go back and listen to. Yeah, but yeah, greatest greatest Blink One Eighty Two record of all time. Not sure about that, but no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. That's a good. That's a good point to start. Where would you rank it? Okay, let me rephrase that. What are your top three Blink albums? And if it doesn't include this one, tell me where that one would rank. Mm, it's definitely not top three. Is it in your top three? Don't think so. I don't. I there was a moment after it came out, where I thought it might, but I don't. Like now that I've spent some more time with it, I think mm. that would be a bit high. Yeah, I've always kind of like in terms of top three, I've always kind of switch between anima and take off your pants um, really what we're one of those is your number one right oh anima definitely it's, no question it is anima it's, it is has it? to be the correct answer surely well i love take off your pants so it, i kind of alternate between between those okay two, i guess really. okay but they're one and two what what's the third one for you <sighs> I don't know. It's a tough one, isn't it? I did like self-titled. I thought, like, see, that's good... that's a lot of fans. Kind of, that's their number one for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. But you're debating whether to even have it in the top three. Well, Dude Ranch, I guess. Like, if we're going further back, yeah, I think. Do you know what I mean? It's but it's a different. It's a just a different generation and era of Blink-182, right? Different sound. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is kind of like like the new record, right? It's like the newer sound versus the old. I think it's still got that that older bit of an older mix blended in, but yeah, it's definitely closer to their more recent releases. It actually, it reminds me of California, the first Skiba record. I think it's yeah. very, it has a similar feel to that. Yeah, but produced all by Travis this time, right? Yes. Yeah, quite a few um, co-writers in there, but Travis yeah. is is the producer, yeah. I did see the other day the Interrupters guy was... Um, yeah, he's on a song or two, he's yeah. A few songs, did, did piano and keyboard and a few vocals. And Travis yeah. singing on it as well. In a couple Although, of places, yeah. yeah. I know that came up a little bit from the uh, Zane Lowe interview. I watched that, yeah. it was quite a good watch. But yeah, what's summary of the record? What like? Yeah, I think it's. I do think it's strong. I really like it. As I said, it reminds me of California. No, is it as good as California? Which I, it, you know, that's kind of my hot take that I think California is one of their best albums. Even though I know a lot of fans would disagree with me. Is it as good as that one? I'm not sure. Because uh, like when I listen, when it came out, I listened to it through twice. You know, as soon as, as soon as it turned midnight and it was out. I listened through and I listened through again and I, I really liked it. I was like, oh, like every song is is actually pretty good. But yeah. now I've spent a bit of time with it. Like, you know, like sometimes with pop songs, you hear them the first time, you're like, oh, yeah, this is really good. But they get old really quickly. I feel like with a couple of songs on the record, they were like, I've got a bit bored of them. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it overall anymore, but. Yeah. I'd say you know a, a solid three and a half, four out of five. I would say still. 
Cool. I guess it's really big on like the sentiment of like where they are as a band. And I guess yeah. that for those that watch that Saint Low interview, I think that kind of told that story as well, right? It was very much yeah. a record about like them coming back together and like Yeah. That was a great interview, by the way. I thought um it was very he asked some good I was watching it with with Barisha and uh she kept pausing it and saying, see, that's a great question that he's asking, you know, kind of it, like, thinking, well, I want to be thinking about that, like those kind of questions when I'm interviewing people on this. Yeah. I mean, it was a very open and honest interview. And I wonder how much of like, obviously Zane loves, you know, uh, whatever, you, however you feel about him. He's been around the block, you know, in the industry yeah. and very, very qualified and um, interviewer. But, um, I wonder how much of that was like almost kind of pre-prepared in collaboration with Zane Lowe. It wasn't just a Zane Lowe interview. It was like the Blink-22 guys sat, maybe sat down with him and like almost planned what they wanted to get out of the interview. Do you know what I mean? And like what they wanted it to be. It wasn't just like he brought up the Skiba era out of nowhere and they weren't yeah, expecting yeah, it, for example. Yeah, like, because it was... It was a like you, like you say it was a good, it was a good interview and it was very open yeah. and honest and the questions were really good and yeah it was kind of the make it was kind of it was very much sat alongside the release of the album didn't it and it was like it did them yeah. them laying bare like where they are as a band like you know what the last few years has has been like and how they come back together it was kind of yeah. It was just all kind of just knitted it all together, didn't it? In terms of like the story, the release, the record, like. So, so are you saying that it perhaps wasn't as an authentic of an interview as the ones we do on? I'm saying it's still a... <laughs> because oh, we don't we we perfect. never speak to the teams of who we have on here and just talk about everything we're going to ask. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I would say you know there's still an element of authenticity to it in the yeah. sense that you know. I just, yeah, it was just, I think there was a clear agenda in terms of what, you know, what that interview was supposed to be. What's your favourite song on the album? I mean, I do like One More Time just because of that that sentiment. You don't know what you got. Yep. I really like that one. I didn't like it at first, but it really grew on me. Uh, I like Other Side. Yeah. Um, what's the other one? Fell in Love. I think that's a nice. That's, a that's very poppy, but yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably my favourite at the moment. But like I say, need a bit of a revisit. I'm driving to yeah. Edinburgh tomorrow, so maybe I'll. Oh yes, maybe that's a good opportunity. Play some to of it on that. Yeah, give, yeah. Give it a few more spins. Yeah. Nice. Um, real quick, couple of other big releases. Um, Gaslight Anthem, Menzingers. You had a chance to spend any time with either of those? No, no, but it very much. I f- forgot. The, I knew the Gaslight stuff was coming. When did it come out? Yesterday. Uh, last. Friday sure. at the time of recording yeah. last Friday. I'm well behind. So yeah, I'll stick I'll definitely stick that on the um playlist. I think I'd heard three or four from that. Yeah, they released a few they before it came out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um Menzingers, no. Okay. Other, other okay. than the ones that were, there was a couple released from there as well, wasn't there? In advance. Again, no, again they released quite a few in the yeah. build up to um, that. Your thoughts? Gaslight Anthems kinda it's okay. It's got a couple of Really good songs on there. Then the rest of it, I'm just kind of can take or leave. Men singers, I feel I need to spend a bit more time with because it's not, it's okay. It's not really landing for me. I know lots of people that really love it. It's kind of, I feel like they've they've really they're really pushing it with the songwriting, which I admire. But yeah, I, I haven't found myself going back to it very much. I need to kind of force myself to do that. I, I mean, I have been following. There's just loads of stuff with fest going on at the moment that's popping up on my like oh yeah instagram yeah. as well yeah. so they're kind of a couple of bands have popped up off the back of that that i'm gonna check out oh Too yeah any daves you heard of them I'm not sure i have um, no. and there was another band i've forgotten their name now but yeah seems to just be a lot of activity around the whole fest thing at the moment so yeah fest always looks like fun Friends yeah. of the podcast burnt tapes are out there playing it. I think I oh, think nice. it's their first time they've gone out there for it. So yeah, that's really cool to see. 
Cool. And talking of festivals, we've had a um, couple of uh, UK festivals popping up with their, their lineups in the last couple of weeks. 2003. Slam Dunk. Yeah. Yeah. What What do you think of the lineups? Of I mean, those? I'm all American rejects being Slam Dunk's like, big names. Is this a bit? underwhelming for me like yeah i mean yeah they were like big back in the day but like i mean and i like all of my re- rejects don't get me wrong but if that's yeah. your like your big big cell bound like yeah yeah i just you just expect something a bit better don't you you do yeah yeah I, everything you said there is exactly how i feel there yeah uh just a bit underwhelming but gaslight yeah. on 2000 trees yeah, I think that's their main headliner. 2000 yeah. Trees, which obviously we covered last year. Hopefully we'll be back there for that. I suppose there's, there's you know, not to say that lineups will, will add add potentially some more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there'll be lots so... more on that. But yeah, Gaslight, that's a decent headliner for 2000 Trees, for sure. Cool. Well, who have you got today, anyway? Today, um, we have Taylor Acorn, who's really really becoming a big name she kind of so she started out as a country singer back in the day and then she kind of because but she's from a pop punk background and then kind of made a name for herself because she would like do online covers of like she did an acoustic version of first eight for example that that went viral and since then she's been recording her own music and it's it's very very good and you know, she's get as you'll hear from the interview, she's getting bigger and bigger. She played Download Festival uh, uh, this past summer, and nice. there's been a few notable things like that. And I just think she's just growing and growing. And um, yeah, it's cool because um, she's very talented. And it was, yeah, really appreciated her being on the show and giving us some of her time. And here is my chat with her now. Is it Nashville you're based? Yes. Is it about midday, midday sort of time? It is um, 11 a.m. So just it's oh, still six hours kind of morning okay. time. Yeah, we're a little bit behind. I'm so sorry. Today, they never do construction or anything at my apartment complex. But today they decided to do it and like hammering things. So if you hear <laughs> that, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's all good. Nothing's coming through just yet. But, okay. Good, um, good, so good. I think I think we're all good. Amazing. You have to bear with me as well because I normally I I normally have a co-host on this show. Okay. But um, I'm flying solo today. Like he's just had. You're I good. say he's just he's just had a kid. It's been a year now since he's had the kid, and like <laughs> I'm I'm doing most podcasts by myself at, at the moment. <laughs> so I should be more used to that at the minute. But um, but no, I think we'll be all good. Like I've uh, been trying wanting to book you for a while, so uh, we. Aww. We appreciate you being here today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Let's let's firstly talk about it's not been too long since uh certified depressants been out in the world. Mm-hmm. Is it I think it came out in sept- late September. Um yep. how's the world reacted to that? It's been really amazing, honestly. Um it's it's always really nerve wracking, you know, putting out a piece of work that you wrote and um I feel sure. like it's been such a long time since I had put out a project. I mean, my last like full body of work of songs that I had written came out back in 2017. So, I mean, I think there was just like a lot of pressure and I obviously was really excited, but you just, I wanted to put out something that people would enjoy and, you know, was a step up kind of from what I had put out originally you know yeah. years back and so there's always like that pressure of like oh is people are people gonna like it is it is it gonna do well and um i feel like people have been resonating with the songs um really well and Excellent. i'm really excited to play them live i think it's gonna be so fun what's your favorite song on it i kind of go between good enough i really really love good enough um and i love famous last words i think that's kind of like my little hidden uh, the little hidden gem in there. I think that, like, for the live show, people are going to really like that one too. I've 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 been enjoying it. It's, it, it is a really solid release, and uh, I've kind of been. It's almost like revisiting. Uh, think think I'm in love because obviously you put that yep. out earlier in the mm-hmm. year, didn't you? Yeah. My wife and I were just, literally just blaring that song before I came on the school, <laughs> and and she was like, honestly, she she should be as big as Taylor Swift, you oh. know. So, uh, well, thank let, you. Maybe one let, day. Maybe one day. We're working <laughs> towards it. <laughs> I guess like one notable thing is having Cassidy Pope on 
on one of the singles. Um, yeah. I get, were, were you a Hey Monday fan growing up? I was. I was a huge okay. Hey Monday fan. Um, I can honestly like put myself in the place and time when I first started listening to Hey Monday. It was so funny. I would do like little talent shows and stuff. And my best friend yeah. Kelly, she would always, I, I didn't know how to play guitar then. Um, and this was back when I was like, I think freshman in high school Okay, and, yeah. um, she would play guitar and six months was actually the very first song that I decided. I was like, I'm learning how to play guitar. I love this band. I learned how to play that song. And then from there on out, I was just like a huge Hey Monday fan. And so it was really cool. It felt very full circle to like sure. be in the same room writing. And then obviously like her wanting to be on the song was really crazy too. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it still feels like it never even happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure. And I suppose like you, you, we'll talk about this a bit more in a bit more depth a bit later on, but you can, yeah. I suppose you can resonate with her because obviously she's kind of from a pop punk background, but they mm-hmm. did the country thing and, and yeah. there's now kind of back more in this world, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Did, did you talk to her about that experience having, you know, having, you know, a, a similar journey in your own way a little bit, you know? Yeah, I think honestly, that was like one of the major ways that we connected because um, when I had first, you know, decided I was going to transition out of country music, I started doing like the covers on TikTok and doing like the stripped down, like old pop punk songs and things like that. And she had just started doing like the alternative thing. And I think that's kind of where people were classifying me. And they're like, yeah, this is like kind of cool. It's like pop punk mixed with, you know, country music. It wasn't like a thing that was really being, you know, tampered with at the time. And uh, so her and I, we had we had connected on um, TikTok. And then when we had met in person, that was like one of the conversations that we had. I was like, "I, I can totally relate to you. Granted, like she's had a whole like a huge career up until this point i mean she's just massive Uh, so many people know who she is and she's just so amazingly talented the voice as well wasn't it yeah over in the states and that was another thing i remember seeing her on the voice and being like wait what is cassidy from hey monday doing on (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) like i thought like in my eyes they were like one of the biggest bands they were on mtv and all this stuff and yeah yeah um and so it was it was just really cool to be able to kind of hear her story and um i feel like a lot of the times we have like a perception of an artist, especially when you're a fan and you think that their life might be, you know, A, B, C, and D and it's amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah, you know, yeah. but um, she, you know, we, we talked about our struggles and they're all very similar. And so that was a really, um, really awesome experience just to be able to know that like, I'm not alone in this and we're kind of yeah. going through it together and, um, as I'm starting over, it's kind of like she is too. So as yeah. much as we can lift each other up in all of this is uh, is really important to the both of us. So You're going out on tour in November. Is this is this like your first headline tour in this kind of iteration of your career? Is that yep. right in thinking that? Yeah, very first one. How are you feeling about that? I'm really excited. Um, I feel like I wasn't expecting for it to sell the tickets the way that it did. <laughs> I will be honest about that. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited, you know, I've done a handful of support tours and stuff now. And, you know, again, I've been an artist since 2017. Sometimes sure, I forget sure. that. And I've had fans that have been wanting, you know, to see me play live and see me do like a full headline tour since then. So right, okay. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be really fun. I think that it's going to be a whole mix of just like old fans of my old music and fans of my new music and I think it's just going to be yeah. really like harmonious time for everybody it's just kind of cool it's like bringing two genres of people together so I think it'll be fun I think it'll be really fun who, who are you taking out on that tour sorry I should have that in my notes but I don't um, we are taking this band people are ugly and they are so dope they sound like very five seconds of summer vibes so i think it'll be like a really really good mix um obviously you're coming off the back of a busy summer you were over Mm -hmm. our way um i think was it did you just was it just one uk show that you played and then you played download as well did was that was that everything you did in the uk yeah so we just did the one show um and then download which was 
absolutely insane. Okay. Had, <laughs> yeah. had you been to the UK before, like just like in your personal life or anything? That was the very first time. And wow. we kept making jokes. I was like, honestly, not too shabby for a very first time going to Europe, I would say. <laughs> No, kind of glad not at I all. didn't go when I was in like high school or anything like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go, you know, when I did. It looks like you were supposed to play Camden Assembly, but then it got mm-hmm. upgraded to you played the Underworld, right? Yep, yep. Very good venue. How yeah. how did that go down? It was that was crazy. Um, it sold out, which was another thing. I was like, what the heck is happening? Like I, I you know, because when I'm here in America, I feel like, you know, you get you're like in your little bubble. And I feel like there's, you know, I I play to fans out here and I I like know my fans out here. And um, but then when you go into like a different country and you see that there's people that are like singing your songs and like going so hard for you, it's just it's really like eye opening, honestly. And so for me, I think like the whole time I was just shell shocked, like I cried a lot. (laughs) (laughs) It was really hard to sing because I was just in disbelief. I was like these people are like just incredible so it was a really it was a really amazing experience and i have some actually uk fans flying out for this tour here in america oh wow like crazy yeah (laughs) are they do you know are they fans that have kind of jumped on board in this like last year or so when you've like really blown up or if they are they from back in the day do you know i think a lot of them are from um i did a song with this band arrows in action uh i think it's probably like two or so years ago now doesn't feel Mm -hmm. like it's been that long but um you know I had some you know fans from them like that when that song started taking off I think we all kind of just got um this like really amazing fan base and um but she I mean one of the girls is like she goes hard she's like showing up to every single one of the shows in the U.S. like uh she was at download she was at the show in Amsterdam she like she was everywhere I was like (laughs) this is crazy (laughs) but it's just it's just really cool to have that support from people outside of you know my country which is really cool yeah no it must be cool to kind of be that person for you know because I guess we all had those people for us growing up you know I don't know if I ever went as hardcore for a band as as that girl has for you I did go (laughs) I do remember going flying out to amsterdam when i was really young to see uh do you remember the band midtown who's been driving yeah. records yeah they, i guess that was the closest thing for me back in the day <laughs> i'm really excited to see them too it's just like the commitment that they put in is just yeah you know i give them major props i don't know how you do it how do you sleep <laughs> <laughs> do you do you even get sleep i don't know uh what, what about download itself how was that how was that experience that was really crazy too um i so i hadn't played any festivals um so even going to the uk like that was my very first you know set of festival shows that i had ever played like in this genre of music yeah and um so it was like just being in that environment and you know seeing the people that i you know obviously a huge fan of and look up to i know that like Evanescence was at one of the festivals that we played. And I was like, this is insane. She's like one of my idols. And uh, (laughs) like the reason why I even got into making music in the first place. And so it's just like to be able to see my name on on a bill with like, you know, people like Simple Plan. And there was like Stand Atlantic and Hot Milk, which is a band that I love. And like, it's just, it's just really like, I I don't even really know if I have the words for how I even felt because it just, it it felt like it wasn't real like I felt like I was in a dream but um it was an amazing experience everybody treated us um super well and we had a really good time I got to stick around and watch some of the bands too afterwards which was something we hadn't been able to do um because we were kind of bouncing around but got it yeah, yeah no it was really fun I want to go back <laughs> which set did you enjoy most um I honestly I had never seen them before but the band Palais Royale um, oh, yeah. 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 They, so um, some of the guys, I guess, had stuck around and had watched my set. I had I had never met them before, but I had heard of them um, just like going on tour with like Youngblood and stuff like that. And um, sure. I I was really, really impressed by their set. Um, them and I Prevail was really dope. OK. Yeah. Speaking of that, like what what artists like modern day new artists are you listening to at the minute? And who's who's impressed oh, gosh. you? Oh, 
there's so many. I mean, I feel like there's just so many talented people that are just popping out of like <laughs> out of nowhere. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, I feel like I say this in every interview, but uh, someone I'm really impressed by and I'm a huge fan of is Charlotte Sands. I think that she's just like killing it. And also to like also being an independent artist, it's just really inspiring to see somebody who yeah. is like kind of making similar music, but is also like, you know, allowing herself to have to like make her own way. And I, yeah. I, I really am inspired by that. And that's something that like I've I've been really like passionate about, too, is like making sure you have your creative rights and you can tour when you want, put out the music you want to put out. So I, I really admire her for that. And I'm a huge fan of hers. And oh, gosh, um, there's so many. Um, I mean, Paramore still doing their thing. Huge Paramore fan. Um, Avril kind of made her way back into the scene, which is really cool to see. And um, mm -hmm. I love that. So, there's so many. I could just keep on going. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned Charlotte Sands because we, we had her on this show about probably about a year and a half ago now. Mm -hmm. And like it was it was almost like she was at a similar kind of place to you, but like mm -hmm. it's almost like you've in the last year you've grown quicker than she did at that time because she was I remember she came and she played the Camden Assembly that that mm -hmm. obviously you were supposed to play and like yeah. and like her team kindly invited us down so we went down to the show which was great yeah, but awesome. it wasn't it was like it was busy but it wasn't sold out she had a following here and like mm -hmm. you know but you could tell she wasn't quite there and then yeah. since then obviously she's just, got huge you know yeah and it's just it's so cool to see and it's so deserved yeah. like her performance is just amazing and her energy is amazing and um she's so nice too so it's just have you crossed paths with her a few times done um i mean our music is still like a little like we're very different i think but yeah. um you know, with like emo nights and things like that like we've run into each other and you know i'm really good friends with her drummer dana and um her guitarist oh yeah because you you were all nashville based presumably because she was nashville based i think yeah we're all nashville based so i think yeah. you know it's inevitable you're gonna run into each other here sure. and there so um but every interaction has been really awesome and um Hopefully, maybe one day we'll be able to play like a show or something together. I think that would be really cool. So what we normally do on these shows, we do like kind of talk the person through their career a little bit. So, I mean, if it's cool, if I just jump into that a little bit, because yeah. we, we touched on that a little bit at the top. I mean, obviously with the transitions and stuff, but mm -hmm. I'm just curious about the, the very early years. So I know, I know you're Nashville based, but you're you you from Pennsylvania originally, right? Small town yeah. in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very small town. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about growing up in that town and, and like the music oh, you grew up. But before the Nashville move, like what what the, the kind of early years, what 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 kind of drew you oh, into gosh. music? What kind of styles and stuff? So um, prior to moving to Pennsylvania, we had lived in a suburb of Seattle. So like majority of my childhood was in Seattle and okay. the scene of music there obviously is like, it was very early, like 90s grunge music, bands like Pearl Jam, bands like, like, um, oh my gosh, like Puddle of Mud, um, Stained, like that kind of music. And my dad was a huge fan of rock music in general. Like he listened to like Disturbed and Slipknot and all of those bands. So oh, right, okay. kind of, and I have an older brother too, he's six years older than me. So he kind of like okay. fell into that. It was like yeah. hardcore, like rock and metal and then like rap music so right. it was like, okay. kind of yeah very interesting um music you know upbringing and then we had you know artists like garth brooks and stuff that i i am a huge fan of and um in the country space and um all of that like early 90s country but um i had always really like drawn a liking to music i felt very connected to it even as a kid and um i was always singing i know i was like annoying the crap out of my parents and my siblings and mm -hmm. um did did you sorry to interrupt did were yeah. you told from an early age that you had a good voice was that something you were kind of conscious of it it was so I mean I just I loved singing and my mom um granted like no one in my family and my immediate family is like very musical they they love music and they're they have very good ear for music but they they don't play yeah. any instruments or anything like okay. that so like my singing, I don't think they really knew what 
to do with that. They're like, oh, she's she likes to do this and she does right. it a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, I did get they put me into um, I did one vocal lesson and I think I was like six years old. I got I went in there and I sang for him and he turned me away because he was like, your voice is not developed yet. I don't really work with young kids. But I know we did get like it was like a recording of reflection from that Milan movie. <laughs> So, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, I did do that. But um, uh, I just, I was a very, very shy child. And I, I still am even now still today. Um, I think music mm-hmm. has definitely brought that out of me. But I think a lot of my singing and a lot of my music tastes and stuff like that was very closeted because I, you know, was a little nervous to share it with other people outside of my family. Um, yeah. And then, you know, my my dad passed away um, when I was eight. So when that happened, um, you know, we were on the West Coast. My mom, my dad, they grew up in Pennsylvania. So um, just for the sake of, like, my mom being a widow now and having three kids, like, my brother was off to college. My mom just – she thought that it would be better for us to, like, be closer to family, which I totally agree. And, like, being in such a big city, um, you know – it's, it's a lot easier to get involved with things that, you know, obviously she didn't want us to get involved with. So, um, we made the move to like the middle of the country (laughs) and the mountains of Pennsylvania. And, um, honestly, I I loved it. It was, uh, very, very slow paced. It was very different at first. Um, but, um, Uh, how old were you at this point? Uh, we moved when I was 11, I think. So I was going to like sixth grade. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was, uh, it was a very like interesting move, but, um, it was really awesome because it's like, I, I didn't get to experience any of those things. Like there are kids driving their tractors to school. Like that wasn't a thing. Really? Wow. Yeah. Like it was, it was wild. Um, but they would do like little talent shows and stuff. And I think I kind of mustered up the courage to sing like a Carrie Underwood song. And that's when everybody was like, Oh, like you're pretty good. And I was like, Oh, am I? (laughs) (laughs) And then from there, you know, I just kind of started experimenting more or less with like, um, trying to write my own music and trying to like, you know, learn how to play guitar and all that stuff. But, um, Mm -hmm. I, I found pop punk music pretty early on. My cousin, Nikki, he um was really in the scene like he had like the swoop hair he was like super emo and um when i was 12 12 or 13 he introduced me to paramore and it was all over for me as soon as i saw Haley williams i was like i want to do that and then um like when the aol sessions thing became like a a big thing i would i would go and i would watch evanescence was like a huge a band of mine that i loved um, and yeah. I would go in and I would watch like their AOL sessions and things like that. And um, listening to Amy Lee was kind of how I like I tried to mimic her vocals. I just loved her vocals so much that I think I took a lot of influence from her and, um, yeah. you know, just tried to kind of found my way in like the the rock scene, pop punk scene, downloading music that I shouldn't have been downloading on illegal sites and <laughs> making my own CDs and um, as I found like Made a Parade and All Time Low and um, Story So Far, like bands like that, yeah. and just kind of fell in love with it. Um, and then I went off to college and didn't really know what you know my plans were. I was I was running track and field at the time, but I oh, yeah. I never really was like a school kind of person. Like I yeah. I never really enjoyed going to school. I like the social aspect and like the athletics of it, but not the schooling part, <laughs> so, which is like the most important part. Um, and so I, um, you know, I think it was like midway through my sophomore year of college, I just decided, you know, I really, really love music and I, I want to try to pursue this. I don't know how, okay. but, um, yeah. yeah. And, and from there I just started making like YouTube videos from my college dorm room, with my little iPhone four in the windowsill and doing covers. And, um, then somebody, was interested enough to reach out to me and tell me that I should come to Nashville. This is like, Oh, okay. So that's, yeah. That happened. So uh, it kind of happened. It took a few years. I mean, um, the guy who had reached out to me, he was my age. So he was like interning, um, for a label out here. Okay. And, um, he was like, I, you know, I really want to do like artist development kind of stuff at this time. I think I was like 20, 
20 years old or something like that. Yeah. Um, and he like was very persistent and he was like, just come out here, give it a shot. If you don't like it, it's totally fine. Like, I just want you to just try. And as soon as I did that, I was like, oh, there's no turning back. This is like what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel, um, but that's kind of when I fell into the country world. Did you fall into the country world from being in Nashville or, or had you, like just before that, had you kind of <laughs> transitioned into listening to that music instead for a period? Like how how did that no, kind of actually happen? I honestly, like I, to be completely honest, <laughs> there's, there's probably going to be some of my country fans that listen to this, but I was never really a huge fan of country music i think it was really it was something that was around um it was yeah. like very prevalent in like the area that i lived um my best friends they were huge country fans i love like the early 90s country so like garth brooks and like alan yeah. jackson and, and like that was kind of like my if i was to listen to country even now even though there's so many talented people i think i would still choose like the early 90s country it's okay. because of the nostalgia of it or yeah, yeah. I don't really know. But um I I didn't really listen to it. Um it wasn't ever like my first choice. And when I I guess like when I had started writing my own music and kind of like sending it over to the guy who brought me over to Nashville, you know, I was just like voice memoing songs that I'd written and I think in in that in his brain he was like, Well, country's a really good way to start out as a musician. Okay. Like if you want to get a start and I think, you know, it just, the the lyrics and the songs that I was writing at the time and like w meshed with the production, I think it just kind of went well together. So yeah, I was like, oh, well, I'm a country artist, I guess. And, yeah, okay. You know, yeah, so, and, um, you know, everybody would kind of be like, oh, like Taylor Swift, Taylor Acorn, it's a very country name. Um, <laughs> right. And so I don't want to say I was like gaslit into becoming a country artist, but I definitely yeah. had like a... A little persuasion going on um but right. i'm very thankful for like that route and being a part of that and just kind of getting my foot in the industry that way because you learn so much so so you released the ep in 2017 and mm -hmm. did you kind of tour around a little bit in that kind of in that sort of country scene for a, yeah for a period there? um it was really interesting we did a lot of like one-off shows or like weekend runs things like that i played right. a lot of yeah. the same markets but um now it's it's so crazy because there's so many cities that you know even though i had toured and i've performed before i had never like gotten to even perform in like my home state or anything like that so right. it's just yeah it was really cool to be able to like transition into like the actual east coast touring like it's so different um but i did do like a little bit here and there okay okay yeah. um so how did the transition happen? Did you kind of, did the country thing like fizzle out for you? And did you think like, oh, maybe music's not going to be for me after all? Or did it just, or did you go kind of straight from that into, you know, I know obviously mm -hmm. you, you kind of blew up a little bit from the covers online, but like, was there yeah. a little period in between the two where you were like, I'm kind of done with music now? Yeah, actually. Um, I I think it was 20... 16 20 uh no it would have been 20 i moved here in 2017 i am like getting all of my dates <laughs> discombobulated in my brain i think it was like 2018 um i had been okay. writing for a publishing company out here for about a year yeah. and um the head of a and r there who had signed me on because they had signed me as like an artist writer like it was like an artist developmental kind of situation yeah. but I was also like get, had a publisher and I was getting rights and things like that and you know the more that I would write with people and the more that I would try to write for myself I was just like something's not clicking here and at that time I was like really really battling with my own mental health I was struggling financially I was just like right. not in a very good space to begin with and so yeah I, you know, had gone to my publisher and I'd opted out. I was like, I, I think I'm not doing you guys any good by being here. And, and they were like, we get it. Um, it was a very amicable split. And then yeah. once I left there was kind of when I was like, I think I'm just like in the wrong genre. I think I'm just making the wrong music. And that's when it got really like diluted with just 
all of these different ideas and do we go pop? Do we go rock? Do we like try to do the pop punk thing? Do we still make country music? I, you know, yeah. didn't want to lose my fans over here by switching over to a different genre. Um, because I felt like that was really the only thing that I like had left, you know, was I yeah. had a really amazing like fan base at that time. And, um, now looking back on that now, I'm like, oh gosh, like if I would have only known what would, you know, be ahead, <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't have been in such a um, bad headspace. But, um, you know, I was, I was just dabbling a lot and, you know, trying to put out songs. I put out the song Sinister, which I really liked, but it was just very left field from, you know, generic country. And I think people were like, this is kind of weird. And yeah. Um, you know, just I really struggled with like I think my own personal identity as an artist and um when covid hit, I think that's kind of when I was like, all right, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. Like I've yeah. I've tried it. I've been doing it for a few years. Something's not working. It's not clicking. I'm not happy. Yeah. I'm you know, I miss my mom, I miss my family and you know, at that time my older brother was having kids and I was missing out on that and like just, yeah. just really missing everybody, I think. And um, yeah. I started taking real estate courses. I was really become a real estate really? agent. Yeah, it was okay. like I, I started really diving into that. I am thankful I didn't finish it now, but um, I got very, very close to finishing. And then I just it was like one of those where you had to have it done between a certain time frame. Yeah. And I remember I had like maybe a couple more uh, like lessons left, and. I just sat and looked at it and I just closed my computer and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to give this one last try. I'm going to give okay. it one more try. Yeah. You know, I, I started, um, dating this person who was extremely supportive of me and my career and was really pushing for me to like, keep going. It's like, you're good. You can do it. Like you just have to like put forth the effort. And that's when yeah. I, you know, TikTok started popping off for a lot of other artists. I noticed that and, um, I was like, you know what, I, I want to do this. And I've kind of dabbled with the covers before. Maybe I tried doing some of those, but I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. And at that mm -hmm. time, no one was really doing the covers of like, you know, some 41 or a simple plan or like that, yeah. the old emo stuff. And then as yeah. soon as I did that, um, I think I, I posted a Jamie all over cover was like my first one. And the whole emo, like, um, thing hit like this uh what was it like the um i guess like the resurgence of like the pop punk era yeah and so i yeah. think i just it was like universe was like this is what you needed to do <laughs> and so <laughs> every single day i i would post covers and um you know i was still a country artist at that time technically yeah. Yeah. um and but people were kind of looking at me like oh my gosh this is like kind of country but also that like pop punk, pop rock undertone. And yeah. so I was kind of like, oh, well, maybe I can do that. Like maybe there's a lane for me in that. And then I just got to a point where I was like, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go over here and see what happens. You know, I got to be, yeah. got to be brave. Even if I might lose a, a, a few people over here, like what's the worst that can happen, you know? It's, exactly. And um, seems like it's been pretty good yeah, ever yeah. since that. <laughs> And here you are in this lane still. I, yes, <laughs> yes. I, 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 I saw you mention somewhere that um, is Mayday Parade like your all-time favorite band? Are they, are they like the big one for you? Yeah, they they were a huge band for me, especially like in high school and stuff like that. Even up until now, um, I there is I still listen to Lesson in Romantics probably once a week. Is, so. is that is that your favorite one? Uh, yeah, that's my favorite one. I I do I do yeah. miss. Uh, Jason Lancaster, I won't lie. His vo their voices together were just so good. That's true. Um, That's true. But I do like their self-titled stuff is still amazing, and I'm I'm a huge fan, and I've gotten to see them alive a few times. And um, I wrote with Jake, the drummer, which was really really cool, and Derek. Oh, okay. So it's just it's it's really cool, like just being able to meet these people that I, I really look up to. They got me through some really really tough times in life. So. And now to actually know them yeah. a little bit, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had um, I've had I've had Derek on the show before. He seems, you know, he seems seems from from this environment seemed like a very yeah. nice chap. You know, so humble, just like chill, like wears flip yeah. flops, and yeah. <laughs> he's just very <laughs> laid back. I mean, it's it's you know, 
it's it's really cool when you get to meet people and and they're so humble. But it's like to me sure. in my eyes, I'm like you're a good god. <laughs> right. So <laughs> I feel yeah. I, I feel like um I admire that they they still keep putting out solids. All their releases mm-hmm. are solid to this day. You know, always. You know, even always. like a song just last week was just mm-hmm. like. Very standard May Day Parade, but hey, yeah. that's what I want from them, you know. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anything else. So yeah, exactly. They're great. Okay, so so you you're doing these covers, you're getting a bit of traction mm-hmm. from that, and then what? And then you mentioned you obviously did the song with Arrows in action. Mm-hmm. What was that period like? How did you know? How did what was like the kind of the next big thing that happened to you from like getting all this kind of? Well, we put that song out and. I mean, all of us, we were just so stoked about it. I I was really, really happy that they had asked me to do it. And um, for all of us, that was kind of like a really good, like, open door, I guess, into the scene. And we we made a lot of amazing fans from that. And um, it just kept, I mean, everybody thought I was in the band. So when they started seeing me doing solo stuff, they're like, did she leave? I was like, I was never actually (laughs) in it. But um but yeah, no, I, I, from then on is kind of when I started, you know, like full fledged pop punk. Um, I wasn't one foot in country music anymore. And so I was able yes. to just kind of experiment with that. And, you know, I think we released In My Head, which did pretty well. And then yeah. from then we did like shape shifting, which um, is still to this day, like one of my favorite songs I think I've ever put out. And I really fought for that one too. I was like, Oh, cool. I just need, yeah. So it, it's just really cool to see that that one has resonated with people really well. And then psycho. And then from there on out, it's just kind of been like a really steady incline of just, you know, music and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and social media. I, I, I try not to be on social media too much. And sometimes yeah. I look at it now and I'm like, what the heck happened? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I don't know. It's so weird, but, um, it's, it's really cool. I will say there are, um, people recognize me a little bit more now than they used to, but, yeah. uh, and that's kind of weird because I'll be like at the gym and somebody will like tap on my shoulder and be like, Hey, I listen to your music. I'm like, <laughs> listening to it now actually while I live. <laughs> That's and surreal. so it's just like things like that. It's really cool. Does that happen often? Do you get recognized? How many uh, times a week would you say you get recognized? I, I, th- I, what happens a lot of the time, especially here in Nashville. Um, well, also to usually my hair is not how it usually is. I'm kind of letting it fade for a little bit. I actually have to dye it today, mm-hmm. but um, just trying to keep it healthy. Mm-hmm. But um, I uh, was at the gym actually this was two days ago and a girl I thought it was my boyfriend actually because he had said that he was coming to the gym yeah um I I felt somebody tap me on my shoulder and I turned around expecting it to be him and it was yeah this girl and she was just like I have seen you at the gym so many times and I I didn't know if it was you but it looked like you and and (laughs) she's like I had messaged you one time before but um she she was just so sweet and um i actually i invited her to come to our show here in nashville i was like you have tickets you should come um but it it's been happening in like the weirdest places i think i get noticed a lot especially when i'm at like a show that is pop punk or like emo sure. nights and yeah. um yeah. like when we would go see like the main or like mayday parade or something like that there would be like a handful of people that you know would come up and say hi and yeah i was well, cuz i was like the TikTok cover girl, you know, for a while. They're like, that's the girl that does the covers. <laughs> um, but the weirdest one, we were actually on family vacation in Myrtle Beach. And we were at, um, oh gosh, uh, Medieval Times. Have you ever been to one of those? I have like not, the, no. Okay, so it's like this big, um, like, dinner and a show kind of thing. It's like you put on crowns and... There, you like eat with your hands and there's like horses and jousting and it's it's like really yeah. it's really fun for kids and yeah i mean yeah. i love it i love stuff like that i'm like such a sucker for like the tourist <laughs> attractions and things <laughs> um and we were kind of like in the midst of like a family crisis i won't go into like detail of what it was but uh everyone was kind of like in panic mode um i wasn't because it was my boyfriend's family and i was kind of just like I'm just here along for the ride. Um, yeah. But I had like a crown on. <laughs> I was like in line to get a drink. And 
this yeah. girl came up behind me and she was like, are you Taylor? And I was like, <laughs> ripped off my crown. And I was like, yes, who's asking? <laughs> and she was like, I, I like love your music. And I was like, this is such a weird place to be meeting somebody. That's, but that is very um, random. Yeah, it's just like really like weird things like that or like I'll um like be going into stores and stuff and there'll be people that are like oh I saw you with arrows in action that's always a, a big one um you sang that song with arrows in action <laughs> like yeah I did <laughs> um so just things like that it's it's kind of neat but yeah. weird at the same time I think my first the first time I was aware of you I think was when you were kind of having the moment with the first date cover cover that mm -hmm. you did oh and yeah Fun fact, fun fact with that, actually, um, we had to, for because I got married in 2021, and then mm -hmm. la last year we were kind of putting our wedding trailer together, and we used your used your cover no for a little way. bit of it. Yeah. No way, that's awesome. Which is a fun fact. You'll have to send <laughs> it to me, I need to see it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, we'll do. <laughs> I love that. That's I'll awesome. Put it, I'll, yeah, I'll let you know the, uh, the the portion of the video that it's in for sure. Um, did you, by the way, did you catch uh, any of Blink on the on the on the big tour this year? I didn't. I I wish. I wish. Um, I have some friends that are going to when we were young, and oh, they're like, "Yeah, we're yeah. going to see them." And I was like, "Dang it!" Um, but like any time that they were playing, I was kind of doing something too, so I wasn't able yeah. to. But um, there was a band that we had played a show with uh, or a festival with, Destroy Boys. And oh, yeah. They, yeah they, they, were, they, they were on um, Hopeless. Yep. Um, they yep. were getting ready to go on tour with them. So that was really cool. I was like, oh, good luck, guys. Like, send videos, <laughs> <laughs> send yeah. photos. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we kind of, like, all of those, we just kind of missed each other. But um, I, I'm trying to make it out to a show here hopefully soon before they decide that they don't want to play anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a very good moment to catch them like yeah. we went out to see them we, i saw them in copenhagen then just london the other week and no way. as someone who's been seeing them on and off for the last 25 years this is the best i've ever seen them to be honest so it was very isn't cool. it crazy that it's been that long since they've been a band yeah I know. it's <laughs> wild it's wild i know yeah at times are scary things sometimes mm -hmm. it really um, is a, a, another quick random one you, you you know mentioning kind of contemporaries and stuff and this is going back mm -hmm. a year now i guess but like how did the magnolia park thing come about because like i feel like you know they've been they're such a um band that's having a mo or have been continually having a moment mm -hmm. the last couple of years and stuff like, yeah did, did you kind of meet them through tiktok and stuff like how did that how did that collaboration come about I had I had found them through TikTok. I think I had uh, maybe commented on a couple things, but um, it was very random. Josh had followed me uh, just out of random one day, and um, I saw that he had messaged me, and he <laughs> it was so funny. And I joke with him about this uh, the last time I saw him, but I was like, the message you sent me was like it was very dry. It was like, oh, yeah. do you want to be on a song? <laughs> That's all I said. <laughs> oh, what literally <laughs> and just I was that. Like, Yes. And he was like, okay. And then sent me the song and he was like, uh, we'll have you do the second verse. And so I was like, okay. So I, I took it to my friend, Dan, who I write with a lot. I wrote the second verse, uh, which is the verse that I sang on, but they're great. I, I went out to, um, Florida to Orlando to film with them for the music video. And yeah, yeah. they're just so like another band that just, they're, they're, they have such a, amazing presence online but like and it yeah. and it can be kind of intimidating i think like i think that was one thing that i noticed i was like oh they're they're too cool for me they don't they wouldn't want to hang out with me but um <laughs> when i met them i was like these guys they're just so like nice and down to earth and funny and fun and it's just really cool to be able to work with people like that i feel like i've been so fortunate in that sense where like Everyone that I've worked with, they're just good people. It was funny. Very dry, very dry way to start Love off a, a friendship, but um, it's cool. Do you want to be on this song? To... Yeah. <laughs> um, you, me you mentioned, um, was it, do you say Dan, who you, who, who you write with a lot there? Mm -hmm. Like, do you, yeah. uh, is, ha have you had the opportunity to write with many different people? And like, uh, particularly, I guess, being in Nashville and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I... When I was in the country world, yes, I, I was yeah. writing with, you know, a lot of like new people a lot, but I've kind of, you know, from that experience, I kind of 
you know, Dan and I, we've been working together for a very, very long time. And so I think like yeah. when you write with somebody, you build like a really good dynamic. And so there's like, it's comfortable and he gets my style and he's also a very amazing, like not only producer, but lyricist and like, it's, it's just really easy to write with him and, and really yeah. fun. And yeah. so I think like I've, I've tried to keep my circle pretty small in that sense, just so I can kind of hone in like who I want to be as an artist and, and make sure that I'm not doing it because other people feel like I should be, you know, singing something or, um, whatever it may be. But, um, you know, I've, as of recent, like the last, I think like two years, I've been trying to venture out and, you know, experimenting with maybe writing for other people again and doing that because I love it. I love it so much. And, um, it's just been a, a weird thing. Like I, uh, I had just recently started writing. My best friend had been asking for like years. She was like, just really? let me write with you. Just let me write with you. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, cause it's like, I, I just, you know, but she's amazing. And she did, um, she was on like all of the songs pretty much, um, all of the and new ones. Okay. And what does she have her own solo career? What's, what's kind she, of. She's a songwriter. So she does a okay. lot of like sync stuff and, um, oh, she you. writes, okay. yeah, she writes with just pretty much everybody, any genre. Um, now she's, she's really cool. great. So I brought her in and, um, so we've all been writing together and I think we'll probably continue doing that. I do want to start branching out and like, you know, testing the waters a little bit, but, um, you know, I just, just trying to protect it. Kinda, of so. course. You haven't yeah. you haven't written with Nick Bailey before, have you? I have, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know yeah. how I I don't know if I saw him in the credits of one of your songs or just saw him on your social media. Like I don't know Nick, but I, I'm uh -huh. good friends with he used to be in a band called Over It and the singer of, of their band, Peter, is a really good friend of mine. And then oh, no actually hit yeah, him and they, well, they did over it, and then they then they did another band called Runner Runner after that, which both yep. of them were in and stuff. And I know yep. the other the other guy from Runner Runner is a big songwriter, but I know Nick's kind of mm -hmm. seems to be thriving in the songwriting world. So yeah, yeah, he's he's killing it. Actually, I had met him back when I was a country artist because he would write a really? lot with um, this guy who writes at um, my old publishing company, Kyle Fishman, and um, so I had met him then, and then okay. um, him and I we started uh working together like here and there um i'm actually writing with him i think in like a couple weeks so oh no way <laughs> but he's, <laughs> he's, he's so talented and um when i've written with him it's always kind of been you know for um i don't i don't really know if it was oh we did we did the 408 stuff together that was probably oh, where what, you I, saw yeah okay i didn't didn't realize yeah. you worked on on the 408 yeah. stuff as well okay yep. okay so him and I, now... we wrote our, our verse for that too. So, oh great, okay, yeah. cool. And they're, and they're obviously a John Feldman thing now, aren't they? With uh, big noise. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. well, when when you see Nick in a couple of weeks, tell him that you were interviewed by an English guy who's friends with Peter Munters. And... I, I will. <laughs> but yeah, he was obviously very tight with Peter for many years, so that'd yeah. be enough of a thing. <laughs> Actually, Gosh, um, runner, runner. Yeah. I used to listen to them when I was in high school. <laughs> did, did did you ever listen to the band before oh, their band before Over It? Um, I didn't listen to Over It, but I list I did listen to Runner Runner. You should check so out I Over It because it's such a different pace from Runner Runner. It was so Is strange when they. I mean, I'm I like curious. both both bands, but yeah, mm -hmm. check them out. They're they're, they're kind funny. of that for a lot of people my age because I'm I'm sort of late thirties, early forties. Mm -hmm. When they talk about warp tour and stuff, it's like oh, over it with a band who are underrated and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I, we've nearly been going an hour, so I think, um, <laughs> which I really appreciate, and I think we no, can wrap this up uh, in a sec. But um, we normally finish with like a quick fire round, so if it's cool, mm -hmm. like I'll fire some of those questions to you. Um, yeah. But before I dive into that, do you want to just so you got the, obviously the tour coming up, and then mm -hmm. do you have any plans for twenty twenty four that you can talk about right now? Yes. Um, well, yes, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, also, I'll say this. Um, we are going to be touring again very soon when the new year comes around. Mm -hmm. um, we will be going 
very, very far overseas in a land down under. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yep. Um, we'll, we'll be doing, um, some stuff in Australia. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but I'll say it anyways, whatever. Um, so we'll be doing a few shows in Australia, which will be really Amazing. cool. I've never been there before, but I've, I've always wanted to go. Um, so that'll be awesome. And then hopefully back to UK and Europe for some more festivals and stuff and then more Excellent. music. Really? Taylor, this has been great. Um, yeah, like I say, uh, let me fire some of these quick Fire questions okay. at you, Annette. Then we'll, then we'll wrap it up. They're ve- okay. they're ve- they're not very imaginative. Just to okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, favorite movie. Oh my gosh. Um 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 um. I don't know why this is coming to my brain. Talladega Nights. Okay. That, <laughs> I okay. love that movie. No, yeah, no one's ever said that one before. But fair play. <laughs> uh, favorite TV show. Oh my gosh. Um, probably this show called Mayor of East Town. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm. I'm very aware of it. I have I haven't seen it, but I am aware. Oh my of gosh! It. You need to watch it. It's amazing. It's, it's what so everyone good. says. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. about and it, it's been a while since it came out. So yep. yeah, it's about time I do. Um, yep. UK or US food? Maybe you weren't here long enough to give a fair answer on that. I don't know. I am going to say. Okay, I US food just because like there's so many preservatives in it that it tastes just like so good all the time (laughs) but i love uk food because it tastes so like just fresh and clean so i don't know it's it's different it's so different yeah i mean that's fair that's yeah like even like the mcdonald's are different and stuff i don't know it's like it's hard to compare yeah no it's it's the funniest thing i remember like being with some friends from san diego and like we had a UK, a UK Twix, you know, the the, the chocolate bar and the US yeah. Twix and just the mm-hmm. difference between the two is insane. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh my gosh, I will say though, you guys have these candies called Squashies, I think. And well, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. I'm, not sure squashies, I'm missing out. Um, I think they're called Squashies. I'm pretty positive. All I know is that I found, I have never seen them before. Uh, yeah. A girl, when I was playing at the Underworld, she brought us like a bunch of UK snacks, like candy and stuff. And those squashies, they're like, like, it's like a milk, it's a cream and raspberry, like fluffy little gummy thing. Okay. It changed my life. It changed my life. I've only been able to find them at one place. It was like a random gas station in like the middle of nowhere. I should have bought a ton (laughs) of them, but I'm looking forward to going back to getting those. I'm going to fire three previous guests from this show at you and you're only allowed to keep the music of one of them the, the other okay. two you, oh you gosh listen to okay again. Um, <laughs> this is awful yeah uh okay Who all right I say? uh the main mm-hmm. some 41 or newfound glory i'm gonna say the main just because their new album is so good. I listen yeah. to their new album on repeat. I love it. I So when I listened to that, I thought, this sounds good, but it's going to take a couple of lessons, and I haven't got around to listening to it again. And oh, you just really? reminded me, I need to give it another yeah. chance, you know? I, I will say, what is it, Dose Number 2, I think, mm-hmm. is like one of my, it's like my favorite song to listen to in the uh, all times. It's so good. <laughs> I love it. And did, did you say you've cro- you've crossed paths with them before? Yeah, um, I've I've written with John once, yeah. um, and so, so nice. Again, like they yeah. it's just so cool to meet people like that. That like, yeah. again, yeah. you look up to and you're like, they are a god, they are incredible, and then you meet them and you're like, oh my gosh, you're so like nice and normal and like, you know. So it was just it was really really cool to be able to hang out with them and and get to meet them and stuff i went to one of their shows and met pat and um kennedy and all of them so it was really cool awesome Awesome. yeah final quick fire question if you had to take one album to a desert island what what what's it going to be if 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 it's impossible to pick one just give me some contenders for that one okay i'm probably going to take dizzy up the girl by goo goo dolls oh interesting Okay. I think I'm going to take that just because I am like, I love like the early nineties, like that 
what would that genre of music even be considered? I guess alternative rock or alternative rock. Yeah, I suppose you'd class it as that. Yeah. When you see Nick, you, you should ask uh, Nick because over it toured with Goo Goo Dolls and no he way. Got lots of cool st- yes, when they got oh. signed to Virgin, they got put on the Goo Goo, Goo, Goo Dolls tour, which was uh, that's so Peter, cool. Peter's got lots of cool stories, as I'm sure Nick will. So you have to get some of that. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably take that or um, August and everything after from Counting Crows. Great choice. Great choice. I love that. Yeah. I love yeah. that album. It's like one of my favorites. Yeah, from from top to bottom, that album was just. Pretty oh perfect, my gosh raining in baltimore Ugh, oh every time yeah. i'm like oh yeah. crying yeah. <laughs> but um i yeah i'm a huge counting crows fan i usually listen to either counting crows or goo goo dolls like before every show it's just like nice. i don't know it's just like so nostalgic and very like relaxing yeah. and so it just yeah. gets me like in a good headspace before i play but yeah <laughs> i take those two albums i think okay yeah. <laughs> yeah. solid choices Thanks. Um, yeah, Taylor, I think we can wrap it up there. Um, thanks Amazing. Thanks so much for giving us some of your time. Um, and we look forward to seeing you back over this way, hopefully next year. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. And hopefully I get to see you very soon.